Hi, I'm Chris aka The Philosopher's Games and I mainly cover Tolkien's books and lore in quite a lot of detail on my channel, often also looking at language related details. With the recent official release of some additional information about the Rings of Power show, some people might ask, does a name like Theo fit into Tolkien's world? It sounds a bit out of place. We had a similar case with the name Karine. Theo is a quite interesting case. Often we would think of a short form of Theodore, which has Greek roots. Theos means God, Theodore means gift of God, with Doron meaning gift. Though the Greek mythology was for sure an inspiration for Tolkien as well, I can't really think of an example where he named something with Greek roots. One potential Latin case comes to mind with Incanus, a name for Gandalf by the people of the South, mentioned in the Two Towers, chapter The Window on the West and in the Unfinished Tales. However, it's not Latin inside the world of Tolkien, where it seems to be derived from a tongue of the Haradrim. As a result, the Latin meaning grey hoary might have been just an inspiration here for Tolkien, but you get the point. Latin and Ancient Greek have some things in common and are related, but this is one case from Harad in the far south, not the north-west where Tolkien stories play. There the languages and names of men are represented by Germanic languages like Old English, Old Norse and Gothic. For example, all dwarven names, which are Manish and not their actual Kuzdul or dwarvish names, and even the name Gandalf are basically Old Norse and you find all of them in the Poetic Edda. The Lord of the Rings is written from the perspective of Tolkien finding a written source from Middle-earth, the fictional Red Book of Westmarch, and translating it into modern English. Tolkien chose some fitting old real-world languages to represent many languages actually spoken in these regions and as a result he had not to invent even more languages for his world. However, the name Theo can also have Germanic roots or Old English to be precise and we also know some existing names from Lord of the Rings that include it. The most prominent would be Theoden. We also know of the hobbit Theobald Bolger and the name Theobald also exists in our world and as in Theoden it has the Old English Theod in it, not the Greek Theos. This letter is called Thorn and stands for the voiceless English TH as in think. Theod means according to the Anglo-Saxon dictionary by Bosworth and Toller from 1898, nation or people. The name Theodin would mean king, leader or chief of a nation or people, so a chief of Theod. With this the name Theo could also be Old English, maybe a short form or nickname. We know shortening names or using a diminutive goes far back in history. For example, James became Jim, William became Bill and so on. It seems even in the Middle Ages this concept existed in one form or another. I even think the Vikings had something like this. In Tolkien's world we also find nicknames. Pippin would be a very prominent one. There's also Bill if we think of Bill the Pony or Bill Fernie from Bree. According to the book Peoples of Middle-earth it's maybe a short form of Bildad, Bilkusal or Arambil. So having a nickname or I think you also call it pet name would in my opinion work in Tolkien's world. It also fits the name of Theo's mother Bronwyn, which would also be Old English or Anglo-Saxon. Wyn means joy and Brond means fire, brand, fire or sword. So it translates to sword joy. From this Vanity Fair article we already knew that she was a healer and a single mother and now we know Theo is her son. The Old English names fit to a region in Middle-earth called Rovanion, especially the west of it and it's probably not an accident that Old English is a West Germanic language. We know that for example the ancestors of the people of Rohan, the Eotheot, meaning horse people, lived there in the Third Age. One can of course argue that the show plays in the Second Age, thousands of years earlier and we should find an even older Germanic language in this region instead, but that would be something like Proto-Germanic and we have no real written sources of that. It's reconstructed applying the knowledge linguists found out while researching how the Indo-European languages developed over time. Very interesting field. 
For Old English, Old Norse and Gothic we have written sources. As a result, I'm not angry that they just went with what Tolkien used for the Third Age, though it might be inaccurate in the Second Age. Tolkien focused only on Elves and Númenor when it comes to writing about the Second Age, which also makes sense inside the world because only those wrote things down and as a result future generations had written sources of what happened at that time. Dwarves also wrote down things but they were very secretive and as a result knowledge about the dwarves was extremely limited. As said, Tolkien wrote all this from the perspective of someone finding these sources and translating them. So in conclusion, the name works out in my opinion. I hope though it's just his nickname though. It seems they try to use a bit of a hybrid strategy with names, so they often work in a modern sense but also inside Tolkien's linguistic approach. I can see why they would do that, though they sometimes might have to make some sacrifices for that. Here a little bonus section regarding some other names. I could not make much sense out of the name Karine, but it must be a Quenya, an elvish name like Isildur. I talk a bit about this name in my long analysis video about the so far released information of the show. Link is in the description. Nori is according to the show's cast page a short form of Elanor. Sam's and Rose's first child also had this name, but it's a Sindari name, so elvish. It means sun star and is the name of a flower. On paper it makes sense and works as a reference, but the problem is that Hobbits in the Second Age had no recorded contact with elves yet. That happens 1050 years into the Third Age for the first time, mentioned in Appendix B of The Lord of the Rings. So how can a Hobbit have an elvish name in the middle of the Second Age? Well, I hope they have a good explanation for that. But I think this small dive here shows how complex Tolkien's works are, especially for those interested in languages. Tolkien put in a tremendous amount of work and thought into this aspect of his world. And it shows, but it also makes it difficult to create, for example, new names within it. On one hand, there is a really complex rule set that you will probably rarely find in other fantasy works. On the other, you need to fully understand the rule set first to create a fitting name. And that is not that easy. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little dive into languages of Tolkien's books. I saw this as a good opportunity for an interesting little video that helps filling the gaps in my non-existent release schedule when I work on bigger lore videos. Tell me how you like this format. I know it's about the show that some people are very worried about, but the focus here are still Tolkien and his books and I think it helps to put things into perspective of those. Also, it's a good opportunity to discuss those elements which are so specific that they would, without dropping a name like Theo, remain undiscussed. As mentioned, there is a video where I go into a ton of detail when it comes to the show. Also, a lot of language and writing system stuff is explained in it. Maybe check it out. It also has time codes. Links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button, leave a comment and maybe subscribe if you are interested in details about Tolkien's Lord of the Rings related works. Maybe consider to press the stupid bell as well. Next on the channel, if nothing delays me, might be the first part of the Who is Elrond video covering the early Third Age. The First Age and Second Age parts are already out, just almost 5 hours exploring his lore in all detail. There also might be Elden Ring related stuff on the gaming channel and on my Twitch channel if you're interested. Again, thank you for watching and goodbye.